OK, as I say, we're going to look at some do's and don'ts. Um, we've got a list of 10 in no particular order um, to work through. And um, a lot of these um, are things that if you've attended training sessions with us before, specifically in regard to scripting and coding, you're likely to we're likely to have spoken about. Um, they will also almost certainly appear in our programming guide, which is um, available for download from our website. And um, that's something that I would highly recommend, even um, even even those of you that uh, that are familiar and used to using scripts. Um, it's a really, really good resource. And um, if nothing else is a uh, serves as a good reminder of um, the things that we uh, the things that we should be doing and the ways that we should be doing them. So the first thing we're going to talk about, and as I said before, anyone who's attended training sessions with us before um, will have heard us banging on about return values and the importance of checking return values in our scripts. And when we talk about return values in the business layer, all of our business layer objects, um, any any time we're calling a load or a save or a commit or an execute um, type of function, Anytime we're interacting with um, with the database, um, the the function will return a boolean value, so a true false. It's a, it allows it. This allows us to keep our error handling really, really simple. All we need to really be doing is making sure that any time we make any of those calls, that we check the return value to see whether it has been successful or not. Our scripts are also set up to work in exactly the same way. So our main function typically, um, in most cases, returns uh, also returns a Boolean. And using the template code, when we uh, start a new script, we're always given main equals true. So that by default is set to uh, is set to return a successful response from our from our main function. Now, obviously, as we're working through a script, if we're going to be loading and saving and interacting with business layer functions and business layer objects. It's important that we keep track of um, of successes and failures and report that back using a um, our, our main return value. So you can see in the code example I've got on screen here, very, very simple. Um, we're declaring an account object. We're then initializing that account object as a fin account, and then we're calling the dot load function. And you can see here, if we hover over and pick up our IntelliSense, that that load function returns a Boolean value, and that will determine whether or not that, that uh, function call has been successful or not. In this case, we're going to pass in, we're going to completely ignore that return value and we're going to pass in an account ID to load from the database. And that account ID is dummy, which doesn't exist in this database. So if we go ahead and run the script, you can see here that the script runs successfully because main has returned true. Now the script may have executed successfully. Um, however, that load function has failed. And there is no um, there is no error or warning message um, that's been um, produced to screen to um, notify us that that um, that load has failed. If we look in our debug window behind the scenes, FinPower Connect knows that it's failed, uh, but because we've ignored the return value, um, it, there is no way of communicating that back to the uh, the end user. So typically. When we talk about re checking our return values, we're really just checking about assigning main equals and main obviously of being a Boolean is going to accept the, re the response from the load object. And therefore we go and run that script now. Now you can see that we've um, we've actually failed the script and FinPower and displayed FinPower's built in error message. It's a really, really important concept to get used to. All of our business layer objects and functions are written in the same way of our scripts are written in the same way. Uh, as I say, it enables us to keep our error handling very, very simple. And if you don't do it, choose not choose to ignore those um, those return values, then anytime you get any issues or um, problems with scripts, um, any uh, any kind of um, any any kind of um, issues, scripts not doing what they're supposed to be doing, um, it makes it really, really, really hard to track down where your errors are where your errors are occurring. OK, so that's return values. As I say, there is a piece on that in the um, in the FinPAP Connect program, programming guide. And if anyone has any questions on any of these things, then do feel free to follow up with the code on, on the code support email. We're more than happy to uh, to talk through those things with you. 
Moving on to um, global collections. So uh, when FinPower Connect is, um, is initialized, we open up a database. Um, it loads in all of our global collections. And our global collections basically are um, predominantly all of our admin libraries. So all of this information is loaded into memory um, in the session for the session that you, um, you have open. This enables us to access these um, admin types, enables us to, um, to access those um, via memory rather than having to load them from the database. And again, in terms of best practice, um, anytime we can load anything from memory, it's going to be far faster than loading something from the database. So you can see here, we have another script here where I've written a couple of functions. One is to load an account type from the database. You can see here, we follow the same principles as we just did in our return values check. We're going to create an instance of a fin account type. We're going to load that account type from the database, and then we're going to do some stuff with it. That's absolutely fine. And obviously, if you're going to be updating account type information, then that is what you would need to do. If, however, you're just returning some um, returning some information from the account type, say for a document or for use in a script, then you will want to be using the global collection. And as I said before, that global collection basically means it's just loaded into memory, so it's accessing it is really, really quick. And we do that using our finbl.account types. So each of these admin libraries has a corresponding um, a corresponding object in the business layer. And here we're looking at account types. We're going to do a simple check to make sure the account type exists, and then we're going to access it using this, this um, account types collection rather than hitting a load function to load it from the database. Okay, so it's going to be super quick. We're going to get back predominantly the same information as we would do from the full account type object. You can notice here that this is actually a read only object, and that's essentially what our and global collections contain contain a read only a read only equivalent if you like of the full object so as i say it's no good for updating things but anytime you need to access anything from any of those admin libraries please do use global collections it's going to be a lot faster and make your scripts perform a lot better okay the next thing we'll look at is uh, commenting of code if I go ahead and add a code snippet in here, you'll see that our code snippets generally are pretty well commented. We obviously have um, where we're adding additional functions. We will add fun a function summary um, as well as function remarks and some information on each of the parameters that we're passing into that function. That information is obviously very, very useful. Anyone who's going to come along and use that function in future um, is able to add a, add a quick glance see very, very quickly what the function is used for, what they need to pass into it, and what they can expect to return back from it. As we move through the code, again, code comments are super, super useful. And really, truly, there's no, there's no reason not to, there's re really no reason not to put them in. Um, our, our big push at from um, internally when we write scripts, and indeed um, when we write um, code for the uh, for the system itself um, is all of, is all focused around readability. We want somebody to be able to come and pick this script up and understand at a glance what it's doing very very quickly without having to drill down uh, and really analyze all of the code. So you can see here we have a function that creates a payment arrangement. We've added some comments to it, so it's obvious at what point um, each of the, um, the the different sections of code are um, are actually are actually doing. So here we're updating some properties, we're updating our calculation, we're calculating, and then we're committing our payment arrangement. And again, at a very quick glance, anyone that wants to use this functionality or functionality like it can come into the script, have a look through and say, okay, right, well, I understand what that's doing because it's been properly commented. Seems like a chore, um, but as you, if you get used to writing comments as you're writing your code, uh, it becomes second nature. And, um, and as I said before, there's really no reason not to do it. it makes your life easier when it comes back when you come back to look at a script that you wrote, you know, six, 12 months ago, uh, and also makes uh, your colleagues um, jobs a lot easier when, it, when they come to pick up a, a script that you've worked on previously. Okay, number four, database transactions. 
Database transactions are very, very useful. Um, they allow um, they allow us to commit and roll back uh, changes we've made to um, to business layer objects, and therefore um, before they hit the database. So, for instance, if you are updating an account and some client information, you're working with two separate business layer objects. You might go and make a whole bunch of client updates, and then after that, go on and make your account updates. One may be um, you may be dependent upon the other. Uh, therefore, if your first save call for your client were to fail, uh, nothing's been committed to the database. It then goes through, makes all your account changes, which you actually don't want. Um, without database transactions, it's just going to go ahead and and, and commit that information to the database. The database uh, database transaction allows us to um, allows us to execute a whole stack of code um, inside a transaction, so we can actually go ahead and check. Um, to make sure that we're OK to commit the data or the information that we've changed um, before before we actually go ahead and push that to the database. Obviously, once it goes to the database, it can't be undone. Um, so database transactions give us that little bit of, um, of extra flexibility. We have some pretty standard code for checking and beginning database transactions. Um, this is a um, there is a very, very good sample in the programming guide um, and essentially um, which is essentially um, very similar to the code stuff you can see here in this script first thing we're doing is checking we're not already in a database transaction obviously anytime we're working with the database we have to be very very careful that we're not going to go and lock any records or we're not going to go and try and commit or roll back any other database transactions that might be running or happening in the background we can only uh, we can only uh, work inside one database transaction at a time in a script. Um, and as you can see here, once we've checked that we're not already in a transaction, we start a transaction, we, we set a Boolean to determine that that transaction has begun. We're then going to go ahead, do a whole bunch of stuff. And if we're happy at the end of the script, we'll just double check that we successfully started our, our database transaction. So just to double check there, if we're happy, we go ahead and commit everything to the FinPerconet database, otherwise we roll it back. So it's a really simple um, stuff of code, um, but I would urge you any time you're gonna be working with database transactions, that's basically the, um, the default go-to for, um, for us when we're working on scripts at this end. One thing to mention with alongside database transactions are message boxes. And um, we very deliberately in FinPerconet do not use message boxes in our scripting. As you saw previously, returning false um, uh, when we add from our main function uh, or any script already produces an error message to the screen for the user. Um, we should not need to use a, uh, a standard Visual Basic message box anywhere. This is particularly important anytime there is a database, we are inside of a database transaction. And bear in mind that database transactions are running behind the scenes for things like workflows, etc. Um, so it may not be that you've even specifically started a database transaction yourself, uh, but if you were to write a message box in here, and execute that script, if that message box were to sit, apart, sit up on screen and the end user wasn't, um, uh, wasn't timely in, uh, in clicking OK or cancel or whatever to that message box, then that will hold that database transaction open. And obviously, if we're in the middle of work updating an account or a client or whatever, it's going to lock that record in the FinPerconet database and cause all of your users um, all sorts of problems. So really important, um, we don't use we don't use message box anywhere, um, not the not the default um, default Visual Basic message box. And as I say, it is specifically for that for that reason and for a very good reason. You really do run a a big risk of of locking database records and uh, and causing issues for um, for staff who are trying to get work done. We do have our own implementations of message boxes specifically for user um, user interface um, style scripts. So here we have general user interface scripts, but the same can be said of any script that um, we have access to the user interface layer. So things like action scripts um, are another one, as well as um, as well as some uh, as well as some others. General user interface script, if we flick that over, I'm punching our template code. See here that our main function signature has changed slightly. 
um, as, as well as the parameters key value list that we usually get, we also get um, the user interface and IS user interface BL, which represent is representative of our user interface session. That user interface um, object does have a its own implementation of a message box. That's basically a wrapper that's been built around the Visual Basic message box, but it's uh, internally that is that is doing all sorts of checks against database transactions, etc., to make sure that it is safe to display that message box um, at the uh, at the appropriate time. So we can implement message box, but it should only ever be from a um, from a, a user interface, um, a user interface object. Page sets have um, have the same have exactly the same concept. Uh, MUI, which is basically just the user interface that's passed to page sets, um, also has an implementation of this this message box here. So if you must use a message box, then it must be from a script that has access to the user interface. The other, other things to note, uh, important things um, that we like to make sure are always um, always switched on are option explicit and option strict. For those of you that don't know what they are, option, option explicit basically requires all of our variables to be declared. Now, um, that's obviously a bit of a no brainer. If we're going to be uh, if we're going to be using a variable, then we should be declaring it um, for readability, but also um, we're Declaring the variable is going to assign its um, assign its space in memory, and it's just a good common um, programming practice. Option explicit should always be on. Option strict should also be on. Option strict means that um, your variables, um, as well as being declared, they must be declared of a certain type. So we would be. of string or a fin account or whatever that type may be. The reason that's important is that without that switched on, uh, Visual Basic allows for basically conversions of data types to other data types. Um, so things like uh, objects to strings, uh, decimals to doubles, doubles to decimals, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Visual Basic attempts to sort all those things out themselves itself. Um, and if one data type is converted to another that has less precision or a smaller capacity, then you can actually um, then actually um, data loss can occur, um, and you will also um, potentially run into runtime errors um, when that um, when that conversion fails. It's called narrowing conversion, um, and any time that fails, that will generate a runtime error. So we always want to um, we always want to make sure option strict is on. We don't, uh, we don't allow for late binding. We want all of our variables to be declared and declared with a, with a specific type. By, by switching it on, um, if you were to try and convert um, a data type from one to the other, um, then um, it, will, it will notify you at compile time rather than at runtime, so it simply won't compile your script. Really important that those two are switched on. They will be by default for any script that you start in Power Connect, so please just leave them switched on. Never exit a function without returning true or false if you're returning a Boolean. So um, one thing we don't like to see, as you can see here, we set either we maintain main as um, as a variable itself, or if we were to be um, beginning a separate um, function, our own function, then we would typically declare success, and we would use success to um, to determine whether or not things have um, had worked or failed, and then we would always return the result at the end. What we don't like to see are things like um, exit function or exit sub. And the reason for that is um, is is simply that you're, um, as I say, for, for readability, um, it's really easy to miss an exit function that may be littered somewhere throughout your um, throughout your code. Um, but also, um, but also, it's um, it's actually quite difficult to determine whether or not success is true or false um, at that point. Or indeed, um, as in the case um, in the case that we have here, um, because our our function. Um, returns a boolean by default that's going to return false unless we tell it otherwise um, so in this case they will just continually fail so we try to avoid um, exit function and we try to um, we try to rely on the use of um, of a return value um, instead if you need to return things from that from that function we would typically do that by a by via a byref 
and um, and leave um, leave the function to return uh, a boolean result. Just a couple more things to run through. Um, event style scripts, um, so object event scripts, action scripts, documents, workflows as we have here. These all execute um, the it will all execute um, using an event ID, which is passed into the main function call. So the way these object event scripts work is that they are called multiple times for multiple different events. They can be hooked up to multiple different events in global settings or account types or whatever. And in the case of workflow here, anytime any of the workflow events fire, so when a workflow is first initialized or when a um, when a, a new group is added or a new an item is executed, it will fire into the script passing in the relevant event ID. By default, our template code will always contain a select case um, for the event ID and then list the, the events that, uh, that are applicable to the, to the script type and object type that you've selected. You can see here for a workflow, we have a whole stack of different workflow events and it's really important that any code that we write to inter interact with this workflow is targeted for the specific event. Any code that is executed outside of this select case will execute every single time um, this script is called. And as I say, this script will be called in all of these scenarios below. Therefore, you could potentially have your, uh, your piece of code um, is going to execute multiple times. So we've, th we've seen things like objects being loaded from the database outside of this, outside of this select case in the event ID. Um, which obviously um, which obviously means that 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 is going to go and make multiple database calls um, take a, a huge chew up a huge amount of time um, and various other various other bits of code as well so as i said before simplest way is to make sure that whilst all your variables can be declared and instantiated outside that should really be the only time you're ever adding any code outside of an event a specific event is to declare a variable or, or initialize it. Really important, and as I say, we'll make sure that your uh, your event scripts continue to uh, to work in a um, in a performant manner. Lastly, last thing we'll run through um, is um, just a very very simple one. Make sure you re remove your debug from uh, from any scripts. Last time out, obviously, we spoke about uh, the different debug options that we have available in scripts now. Um, it's really, um, really important, particularly with um, with new ones like debug launch, but basically any of these debug, um, any of these debug options, um, make sure that your code um, doesn't contain any of these. And at worst, that code is commented out before it goes out to um, to a client or a site. Every time it has to write a line of debug, it writes off to our debug console. That all takes valuable time. Um, and if your debug, as we saw last week, last time out, um, you can debug print an entire object and ref which reflects all of its values, etc., um, and can actually take a reasonable amount of time. If you've got that running inside of a loop, um, then your script is going to take an awful lot longer to um, to run through than it needs to. So yeah, that's just uh, another general housekeeping um, rule is to make sure that we remove or at the very least comment out any debug lines before those scripts go out to to dealers. OK, that's all I had to run through um, with you in terms of some do's and don'ts. We may run a follow up session. There are um, there are obviously some um, some other things that um, would be good to cover. Um, we're running out of time this morning, so we're going to we'll cut it off there. And um, as I said, we'll potentially run a second uh, a second session.